you all to rename yourselves. So, están en el lugar correcto. We're going to be talking mm -hmm. about how to create an engaging learning environment at home. But first, we want to invite you all to, um, if you can go ahead and rename yourselves. So, vamos a, a poner su no en su nombre. Vamos a darles de pasito a pasito. Um, so you see where you, uh, you see the icon where your picture is. There's three little dots on the right there where the arrow is. You mm -hmm. will go ahead and click on rename. So si ven esos tres puntitos, si pueden hacer click ahí y hacer click donde dice uh, rename. Y en ese cuadrito queremos pedirles que pongan en su nombre um, el grado, su nombre la escuela y el grado de sus niños. Y si necesitan, um, si hablan español, pongan SP. So in the rename box, we want to ask you to write your name, um, the school that your child goes to, their grade. And if you are speaking Spanish, we are asking families to write SP next to their name. So you can go ahead and do that now, please. And if you have a question about it, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Si tiene alguna pregunta, puede, puede hacer la pregunta. Hi there. Sorry, I just joined. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, well, welcome. Um, so we're asking everyone to please rename yourself. Um, and here are those steps. You know, you click on the little three dots next to your picture. And then you click on rename, and we want to add, we want you to write your name, your uh, the grade and school where your child attends. And for folks who speak Spanish, we're just asking them to write SP next to their name. I'm on my cell phone, and I don't see that option. I don't know okay. if you get that option on the cell phone, um, but, but that's okay. Yeah, Carrie, thanks for letting us know. So we'll be able to work with that. Laura, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Hola, Laura, ¿cómo estás? Soy Pedro. Tampoco lo puedo hacer porque la, la, estoy, la, estoy, la estoy tomando por el celular porque tengo, estoy también, está mi esposa con esta, con este taller porque yo estoy teniendo la, con la junta de PTA del Onfelo. Ah, ya. Yeah. Ok, está bien, no se preocupe, Pedro. Pedro, okay. yo lo, Pedro, yo lo puedo hacer por usted. ¿En cuál grado oh. están sus hijos? En, en cuarto y en primero. Y van a Silvia Méndez. ¿Quién es la otra persona? ¿Perdón? ¿Quién es la otra persona que no podía hacerlo? Eso fue yo. Mi nombre es Carrie Smith. Carrie. Sí. Carrie. ¿Y qué grado son tus hijos? My daughter is in 10th grade at Berkeley High. Okay, 10th, okay. Oh. Um, Anne, Jocelyn's having a hard time with the link. Do you mind um, checking in with her? Not a problem.
Okay, thank you for your patience, everybody. We're um, just uh, waiting for our other facilitator. So um, just if you could bear with us. Sí. Gracias por su paciencia. Vamos a empezar en un momentito. Solo um, necesitamos um, que entre la otra presentadora. Gracias. Laura, should we just go get ahead again started and at least? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and. Um, okay. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Ann Caligari and I supervise the Office of Family Engagement and Equity. And I'd like to welcome you all here today. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, this is a seminar that is uh, directed towards K or TK5. Um, if you are outside of the scope, you might be able to help others who are on this call with some tips and ideas on how to survive distance learning. Um, so uh, with that, uh, our facilitators are all here. Jocelyn Foreman has just entered the building. Uh, but so uh, with that, I'd like to introduce our support um, and much appreciated Adelita Martinez, who is our new uh, professional development supervisor with the district. Uh, and she has been a huge support with helping us uh, with getting our first seminar going. So Adelita or Lida? Yeah, either way, Adelita or Lita is fine. We're <laughs> really lucky and, and really honored to have so many of you here and we just hope that you really find this session valuable and our facilitators for our learning today will be Jocelyn Foreman and Laura Rivas and they're going to introduce themselves in a little bit and we'll get started. So, vamos a estar uh, traduciendo durante este taller. Este se acaba de presentar Ann Caligari que es la supervisora de la oficina de todos los uh, coordinadores que somos enlace con familia y también nos acompaña Lita Martínez que es nueva en nuestro distrito y ella es coordinadora de, de todas um, las uh, capa capacitaciones para los maestros en el distrito y es, ha sido un apoyo enorme para nuestro equipo en esta presentación. Lo hubiera dicho en español, <laughs> perdón. <laughs> Entonces, um, well, queremos saber quién estamos aquí, ¿verdad? So, we want to know who's in the room, and we want to invite you all to please um, add in the chat box, if you can now, um, again, just your name, your email, because we're trying to compile all of the emails and contact information of, of our participants, and the school site that your children attend. If you can go ahead and do that now in the chat. Uh, si pueden, por favor, en el chat, uh, poner su nombre, su correo electrónico y la escuela donde van sus uh, niños. Uh, pueden que vayan a varias diferentes escuelas y lo pueden poner en el chat ahora. Entonces, si está viendo la pantalla, así se mira donde está el chat. I see Rosa Parks is in the house. Sylvia Mendez. Craig Mont. Sylvia Mendez, Malcolm X. John Muir in the house. <laughs> Berkeley High. Rosa Parks. Sylvia Mendez. I see King over there. King. I'm missing some. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going really fast. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you, everybody. It's important to know who's here. Um, 
All right, so here we go. It's Jocelyn. So, okay. Good evening, everyone, and thank you all for attending. This is um, really exciting for a lot of myself and the Department of Family Engagement. And again, we're, we are happy to be working with Ms. Adelita. We just want to thank her from the bottom of our heart for giving us the opportunity to display our kids. Um, and so I feel like that's a perfect segue for this exercise. Um, my name is Jocelyn Foreman. I've been with Berkeley Unified School District now for 21 years in January. Um, a little bit about me, I raised five daughters in this district. Um, I'm also a union person. I am also um, just recently um, housed from being a McKinney Vento family. Um, I have also, in the time that I've been a parent with this district, um, been on subsidized housing, um, and I've had to use uh, food stamps and other public services to help ends meet. Um, because of those things, um, and, and I've also had to work two or three jobs in the midst of raising all of these kids. Uh, because of those things, um, the picture of me to most educators or parents is a little skewed. Um, and because of those things, we'll, we'll just call them societal issues. Um, they gave me hiccups in places. So um, drop-offs were not easy. Pant teachers wanted to meet with me. I had to get off to work. Um, I was never really able to go to like book fairs or join com school community events. So who I was to the school was a little bit jaded. Um, it wasn't until um, a teacher, Barbara Vogel, saw favor in me and she aligned me properly and I was able to uh, be involved in the learning for my children and I was able to bring some of the learning home. Um, and so I would ask you in this moment, um, what situations have painted pictures for you? And when I say pictures, I mean pictures or um, give, gave your pictures colors that weren't authentic to you. Maybe people misunderstood what was going on with your family. Maybe you weren't able to communicate in a way that was meaningful for you or to get help for your kid. Who paints your picture? And so I want to open it up to the group. So and encourage guess, you to think about that. Lo que está compartiendo uh, Ms. Jocelyn es un poquito de su historia. Vamos a hacer esta dinámica para conocernos mejor. Se llama ¿Quién pinta tu imagen? Y lo que ella compartió es cómo ella, este, cómo ella ha crecido en este distrito, primero como madre, ¿verdad? De, bueno, primero como estudiante. Debería decir, ella estudió en las escuelas de Berkeley. Ella este, creció a cinco hijas en este distrito. Han habido cosas en su vida que han este, creado, como ella dice, han creado como historias o narrativas que no le pertenecen a ellas, que no es, es auténtico a su experiencia. Que a veces cuando los maestros querían ponerse en contacto no podían o, o no tenía... Um, no respondía a las llamadas o era difícil contactarse con ella o no participaba. Y había una maestra que la ayudó a, a traerla adentro a, al ambiente escolar y vio algo en ella que fue muy valioso y ayudó a, a transformar esa experiencia de una, um, de una mamá que estaba batallando, no tenía vivienda, estaba en asistencia, o sea, tenía que usar uh, beneficios públicos, lo cual muchas familias hacen. Y, este, y a pesar de todo eso, ella tuvo que sobresalir y ver el valor que ella misma tenía. Entonces, queremos invitarlos a compartir cuál es su historia de ustedes. ¿Qué ha sido algunas experiencias, tal vez, que ha pintado una imagen de usted que no es, que no corresponde con su experiencia auténtica de usted? Um, vamos, entonces, vamos a... We're going to put you guys into breakout rooms. And 
you each person will have two minutes to share and I will let you know when it is time to switch. Si sí, vamos a hacer en grupitos y uh, arriba en su pantalla van a ver cuando ya es tiempo para dar turno a la otra persona. Cada persona va a tener como dos minutos para compartir en sus grupos. <laughs> you should see something on your screen and you need to click on it to get into the breakout room. You guys can go in and visit the rooms if you want. De nuevo, espero que hayan tenido una oportunidad para compartir un poco. I hope that you, each of you had a chance to share a little bit about your own story and finding your own voice as a parent, as the amazing parents that you are. Um, here, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again. What is this? And so just to um, give us a, a, a quick little recap of what we're going to be doing together today is we're going to be sharing some ideas for time management during this time, um, some math support, literacy support, and setting goals and reflecting on them with our children. Uh, so vamos a, a esto es lo que vamos a repasar hoy un poco de um, cómo manejar el tiempo. Eh, un poco de apoyo en matemáticas, en uh, lectura y, y también cómo establecer, um, hacer metas y reflexionar en esas metas con nuestros chiquitos. So, we all have so much that we're dealing with in this time. Um, we are living through a pandemic. I think sometimes we forget, you know, we're trying to act as if we're trying to be productive, we're trying to do all these things as if we weren't living through a global pandemic. And I just wanted to re, um, invite us all to remember, right, that our own humanity, that we are also human beings um, with a ton of resilience, but also some limitations of our own. And that, you know, as we support our children, that we also feel supported ourselves. So I really love this image of this uh, little child, you know, reminding us to connect first above and before everything is to connect understand, listen, take time, inspire, value, accept, and then teach. 
and empathize, and that even the smallest flower can scatter magnificent seeds. Este solo para a recordarnos a conectar con nuestros chiquitos, ¿verdad? A comprenderlos, a tomar el tiempo para escuchar, a sentir inspiración, aceptar quién son y enseñarles también que um, durante este tiempo que estamos um, viviendo en algo tan difícil como una pandemia global, a veces se nos olvida a cuidarnos a nosotros mismos para poder estar ahí para nuestros niños, ¿verdad? Y um, something I heard a wise person say once is that the longest journey that we might ever have to go through is from the head to the heart. And so this just also reminds us that what is stronger than the human heart, right? That our, our heart is, is very, very strong. And um, so nuestro, nuestro corazón es fuerte. Este, esta imagen me recuerda de algo que alguien dijo una vez, que la jornada más larga y más difícil tal vez es, es de nuestra cabeza al corazón. ¿Verdad? Que esa es una jornada muy larga y muy difícil y que nuestro corazón es fuerte y tenemos todo lo que necesitamos para sobresalir situaciones tan difíciles. Miss Jocelyn. Sorry, guys. So, um, in talking about um, the distance learning, I know for me, uh, one of the things that was the most difficult for me being away from school is the physical representation of school. And so me personally, I need the structure. But if I need the structure, your kids probably need it too. So the kids probably miss the physical representation of walking through the gates, riding on the bus to and from school with their friends, um, some of the talks that they might have, some of the games that they might play in the seats. Um, sometimes uh, kids um, can miss the I, they're most definitely missed the social part because kids don't learn in silos. Kids don't learn um, separately. They learn and cross-pollinate and share information with each other. Um, they do this in on the bus. They do this in the lunchroom. They do it in a playground. And so in thinking about this part of the talk, I think that what was important for me to drive home is that School is the constant, and our lives are the variables. And so when I say school is I can't hear you, Ms. Jocelyn. <clears throat> uh, so Jocelyn, your sound went off. OK, uh, you're back. We can rely on schedules and routines. And so in the absence of the physical structure, what we can do as parents is bring some of that constant home. And so um, we'll be talking about a couple of things, but one of the things that I wanted to introduce was time management. Can, can you move the next slide? Yes, let me just translate okay. real quick what you said because it was okay. really good. Okay. Um, so, sí, familias, este es eh, lo que acaba de decir a Miss Jocelyn es que como muchos de nosotros estamos totalmente, verdad, eh, eh, hemos tenido que cambiar totalmente nuestras vidas. Nuestros niños están también extrañando esa estructura, esas rutinas que siempre tu, tenían en la escuela, ¿verdad? Puede ser que extrañen el, el sentir, de, el sentimiento de estar en la escuela o extrañen a sus amigos o la, algunas transiciones como irse en el camión a la escuela o estar en la cafetería con sus amigos comiendo, jugando en el patio, que estos, para muchos de nuestros niños, eh, lo constante en sus vidas siempre ha sido ir a la escuela, ¿verdad? Si todo lo demás es, es, está, es variado, las situaciones o circunstancias cambian, lo constante siempre ha sido ir a la escuela. Entonces, ahora nuestro desafío como padres es cómo podemos retomar esas algunas rutinas y horarios o eh, rituales que pueden ayudar a crear estructura para nuestros niños y para nosotros en casa, ¿verdad? Para ayudarnos a sentir de nuevo como que hay muchas cosas que no podemos controlar afuera, pero hay cosas que podemos controlar en casa. Uh, 
I had the opportunity to work with some families at Malcolm around routines pre-pandemic, and I thought that this would be an excellent opportunity to share this with the greater community. So um, I don't know if everybody can see this. I'm trying real hard for everybody to see it. So on the bottom, you have subject areas or activities. So you have math, reading, a break, and snack. And then what you can do is commit it to a clock. And you color code, you color code the clock. So you're doing two things. You, you are adding structure to the time, and you are honoring and fostering the, the level of independence that the teachers are planting in your kids right now that is so important so that when we go back to school after the pandemic, what we've done is uh, bridged. We've created a home school connection. Uh, for some kids whose academics are a little bit more challenging, it would be my suggestion, suggestion to increase the time so that you build the capacity of your student. So if, math, if your student has an issue with fluencies, increase the math time. Um, take away a little bit of the break time and increase snack time. You know, you can play with that any number of ways that you would like, but it is all capacity building. And other students might have different challenges, like the morning routine might be a little difficult. You may still want your kid to get up, brush teeth, wash face, make bed, put that on the clock. Put that on the clock and try to squeeze it in before you have to log on. And then incentivize it. Because teachers incentivize kids following directions. They have marble jars at school. Create a marble jar or do a, um, uh, a little star chart, incentivize it. These are things that we can do as parents at home. Let me translate that, Ms. Johnson, because that was, can, I, can you show your, um, your clock again so I can translate it? Hold on. If people want to see, if you click on top and click on speaker view, then you can see Ms. Jocelyn a lot better. Si, um, si quieren ver en grande a Ms. Jocelyn, lo que está enseñando, pueden ir a donde dice Speak Review, arriba a la a derecha, y se puede ver en grande. All right, Ms. Jocelyn. Oh, okay, there we go. So, eh, lo que acaba de describir um, eh, Ms. Jocelyn es un, que a veces nuestros niños batallan con rutinas, ¿verdad? O a veces hay un tiempo en el día donde están batallando, ya sea en la mañana o en la tarde. Hay una manera de organizar el tiempo con, usando colores, ¿verdad? Como ella está describiendo que se pueden usar los colores para designar, um, por ejemplo, el azul puede ser el tiempo para um, hacer trabajo de, de escuela. El rosa puede ser tiempo para hacer para tener su descanso o mover su cuerpo. Escoger otro color para designar, ok, ¿cuál va a ser la rutina de hoy? Para que los niños, le están do, estamos dándoles varias cosas. Les estamos dando la seguridad de saber lo que viene y tener como algo que, que ellos pueden saber, ok, eso es lo que, va, lo que voy a hacer hoy. Y también les estamos dando un orden en su día, ¿verdad? Estamos ayudando a que manejen el tiempo en casa. Eh, cuando estaban en la escuela, ellos tenían, las, las maestras usan diferentes uh, técnicas para motivar a los niños. Es otra cosa que Ms. Jocelyn compartió. Que en casa podemos usar um, también como eh, eh, podemos hacer una tabla con, eh, con estampitas por cada cosa que hicieron bien. Tenemos que celebrar los logros de nuestros niños por tan chiquitos que sean, ¿verdad? Si ayer no se quisieron lavar los dientes, pero hoy lo hicieron sin que nadie les dijera, ok, felicidades, vamos a darles una estrellita, vamos a reconocer ese, ese crecimiento, aunque sea chiquito, porque todo eso les va a ayudar cuando venga a tener que hacer trabajo de la escuela en casa. I hope I captured everything. <laughs> ok, I'm going to go back to... Okay. These are some other ways that we wanted to show. We saw, found these really cool um, pictures of just 
simple ways that we could support scaffold is a, way, a word that teachers use but wanted to share it here also that we also have that language as parents right how do we scaffold or support um, these schedules and routines for our kids at home and we can do it in a variety of ways Sí, um, es, este es otro ejemplo de cómo eh, podemos usar cartulina, cualquier cosa que tengamos en casa para crear alguna rutina o horario para nuestros chiquitos de acuerdo a su edad, de acuerdo con lo que necesiten um, y de acuerdo a lo que nosotros podemos hacer, ¿verdad? Pero el chiste es um, apoyar y mantener algún tipo de estructura y ser constantes. Ok, so math. This is my favorite. So um, prior to family engagement, I was an instructional aide. I mean, I was an instructional aide for special education. Most of my job was the, the adaptation and modification of schoolwork. I had to collaborate with case managers on that. So what you are looking at now is the way that skip counting looks in the story of units. But what I did was modify it because I had students that had tracking issues. So what I did was explicitly taught the skill. So let's just pick a number, threes. So on a stick, a stick, what I did was just put the numbers. Just put the numbers. That's it. The threes. So if I wanted them to learn threes, I set a goal, and I think my goal was five numbers a week until we got to 100. So what you do is just go over these numbers with them um, in repetition. And what I did was um, told them to say it, told them to see it, say it, write it. Those three things. They had to do that before we could move on. And then as they mastered it, I just add it to the stick. So now we have from three, three to 15 and 18 to 30. And so you just keep adding, keep adding, keep building capacity, keep adding, keep adding. And then what you find is when you go through each one of the numbers, um, you can color code the numbers so that the kids can recognize the numbers on the number chart or on the number line. And so um, after we did that, you know, we had to celebrate the small successes, Lala. <laughs> you know, what we learned, we added five to the, to, um, we added five to the 15. So now we're doing uh, 18 to 30 and so on and so forth. And then we had the kids who could not identify these numbers on the number line. So for those kids, I put the sketches on top of the actual numbers. I don't know if you Jocelyn? Yes, yes. So, eh, Miss Jocelyn tiene años trabajando con niños en educación especial y ha aprendido muchas técnicas que ayudan a todos los niños en realidad, ¿verdad? Una de estas técnicas es contar saltando por, por diferentes números. Este, ella está dando el ejemplo de cómo, cómo los niños podemos ayudarles a, a contar de tres en tres hasta que se aprendan, no, you can show your screen so I can see your, the numbers, hasta que se aprendan sus tablas, ¿verdad? So, ella está enseñando eh, cómo en una, en una hoja ella está escribiendo solo cinco números del tres, ¿verdad? Si contamos de tres en tres, solo tenemos el tres, seis, nueve, doce, quince. Empe empezamos con cinco números solamente hasta que se aprendan esos cinco. Después avanzan a los otros cinco hasta que se aprenda todas las tablas, ¿verdad? Y para niños que batallan a veces con eh, entender como que si, eh, encontrar esos mismos números cuando están todos juntos en la tabla de números, les pone los puntitos que les ayuda a recordar. Ok, tres significa uno, dos, tres, ¿verdad? Seis. Y los puntitos y les ayuda a recordar. Y una técnica que um, me encanta que ella dijo es, les dice a los niños, siempre les decía, um, lo miras, lo ves con los ojos, lo dices con tu boca y lo escribes, ¿verdad? Lo miras, lo dices y lo escribes. So, esas son las tres maneras de usar todos esos sentidos para poder recordar. 
you're using all of their senses. I was just saying, you're basically engaging all these senses to help store this information into memory and to make sense. Yeah, and for kids who, who have the wiggles, you can be more creative. So fives would be with your fist, five, 10, 15, 20. Or with the tens, you could slap hands with somebody else, 10, 20, 30, 40. There's so many ways that you can do this. It could be fun. You could build capacity. They could um, soar with their fluencies. We can do this. So, algo también que está sugiriendo como para nuestros niños que batallan para sentarse y hacerlo en, por escribiéndolo, también podemos, podemos pararnos y hacer movimiento, estudiar nuestras tablas, por ejemplo, haciendo así, 5, 10, 15, o haciéndolo como un juego, o haciéndolo como chócala con las 10, 20, hasta que llegues a 100. Y no tienes que siempre estar sentado escribiéndolo como si fuera en la escuela. Podemos ser muy creativos y conociendo a nuestros hijos, podemos um, pues buscar maneras, ¿verdad? Estas son algunas ideas que está compartiendo con nosotros. Ok. I'm going to go back to share screen. So these are the skip sticks. These are also, um, if you have anything at home that you can, it doesn't have to be um, popsicle sticks. It can be strips of paper like Ms. Jocelyn has created. And again, just the visual, you know, being able to hold it in, your, in, in the child's hand to engage the senses is a really great way of practicing. Or the size of a pizza box. <laughs> the strips, the size of a pizza box, they're really thin. You can write numbers there too. So, podemos usar una variedad de materiales que tenemos en casa. Podemos usar una caja de pizza. Podemos cortar los, las cajas de cereal. Podemos usar muchas cartón, verdad? El cartón que se que encontremos y crear este este tipo de actividad para ayudar a nuestros hijos a visualizar. Este, esta manera de contar y están estudiando las tablas. Estamos también creando una fundación fuerte para la división. So the next um, thing we wanted to share with you all is um, counting collections. Um, this is something that um, I learned just also as part of the curriculum, seeing teachers working with students and um, we did a, a parent workshop also where we were practicing. Um, and you basically just take any number of objects from home. It can be anything. It can be Legos, paper clips, beans, black beans, pinto beans, anything that you can count. Um, rock collection that your kid has, buttons. Um, and you basically just, you know, you, if you have a young child, you can, you can pull out like 30 of these things and have them count. Up, and up to that number. If you have an older child, you can pick a, a larger bunch. But the idea, the only, um, when you do it in school, the only rule is that one, you have to work with a partner, and two, you can't count by ones. So the children have to find a different way of counting these things. It can be, um, if they're between TK and second grade, they can count by twos, they can count by threes, or by fours maybe, or even by fives. Um, and if and in this image, um, I did this with my six-year-old. We were counting these little basketball erasers, and we decided to count them by twos. First, we counted them, and then we I went ahead and wrote the numbers for her, and I and and we highlighted the numbers that we were using, right? Kind of like those sent the strip that Miss Jocelyn was showing. Um, so esta es una otra manera de practicar a la matemática es uh, cole contando colecciones. Pueden ser colecciones de cualquier objeto que tienen en casa. Pueden ser frijoles, pueden ser um, botones, pueden ser colecciones de conchitas o rocas que tengan por ahí. Yo sé estos borradores que compré en Target por un dólar y con mi hija de seis años estuvimos, uh, contamos um, hasta el 20 porque yo sé que ella puede contar muy bien hasta el 20 y después haremos más difícil, pero En este caso, um, quería hacer algo que ella ya sabe hacer para motivarla. Y, este, y primero los contamos de dos en dos y después escribí los números arribita para que ella aso este, asociara la cantidad también con este número. 
Exacto. Entonces, um, para los niños chiquitos, um, ah, perdón, no mencioné que eh, cuando hacemos esta actividad de contando colecciones, las únicas dos reglas son, tienes que trabajar con algún compañero o con otra persona. Um, en casa puede ser con un hermanito, con un primo, hasta con un adulto. Um, y la otra regla es, pues tienes que contar, pero no puede ser de uno en uno. Entonces tienes que buscar otra manera de contar los objetos. Pueden ser cortar de dos en dos de 5 en 5, de 10 o más, depende de cuántos objetos tengan, ¿verdad? Um, so, for older kids, you can do counting collections um, that are, again, um, larger amounts, and you can even um, practice saying things like, okay, so if you have, if, if, the if they decided to count by fours, let's say they decided to count by fours, um, you can remind them, okay, so one group of four is, how much is one group of four? Four, right? How much is two groups of four? Eight, and how much is three groups of four? And you're basically practicing multiplication with the children. So, eh, también cuando haces estas colecciones, um, contando colecciones, con los niños ya más grandes, más avanzados, podemos practicar las tablas de esta manera, preguntándoles, ¿verdad? Ok, aquí tienes, digamos que eh, ellos están contando los objetos de cuatro en cuatro. So, es un ejemplo, ¿verdad? Ok, aquí tienes un grupo de cuatro. ¿Cuánto es un grupo de cuatro? Pues cuatro, ¿verdad? ¿Cuántos son dos grupos de cuatro? Pues dos grupos de cuatro ya son ocho. ¿Cuántos son tres grupos de cuatro? Ah, pues hay tres grupos de cuatro ya son doce, ¿verdad? Entonces, ahí vas haciendo las tablas, pero de otra manera, ¿verdad? Estás practicando esas... Um, destrezas. Y de división, uh, for division, Johnson, do you want to do the division part? It's just connecting it. And so you can use the same counters. And if you have a total of 16, and now you're putting them into four equal groups, how many are in each equal group? And so that just shows the, the inverse of multiplication and division, but you can use the same collection that you've been counting to show the connection with division. Sí, entonces, um, gracias, Lita. Entonces, eh, la, lo, la manera de practicar división es, básicamente estamos practicando con las mismas, o los mismos objetos, pero haciendo la pregunta de una manera diferente. Por ejemplo, si, te, si tenemos aquí 16 objetos y los pongo en grupos donde todos tienen el mismo número, ¿Cuántos hay en cada grupo, verdad? Entonces, si son 16 y son 4, ¿cuál es, el, cuál es el, el, la respuesta? Es 16 dividido por, por 4, ¿verdad? <coughs> y y empieza, empezamos a hacer la conexión entre la división y la multiplicación. Okay, so <clears throat> this is, um, these are arrays. So arrays are one of the other uh, ways that our children are accustomed to counting in school. And um, it's an easy way for them to also um, use the, the 10 frame, right? That they, that they are provided with in their class. So um, this is uh, my six-year-old. We were counting these little erasers together and I decided to, put them in a little array for her to organize them that way and created little word problems. And it was really fun because we were using popcorn and pizza erasers. So uh, we were saying, okay, so you have 10 of these uh, popcorns and mommy came and, and gobbled up two of those popcorns. So how many popcorns are left? And so she went ahead and started counting them that way. So now we're doing subtraction using the arrays, but it's a really easy way to um, you to visualize and it can be we you can use um, lots of different things around the house um, Miss Johnson, did you want to uh, you can use things around the house like egg cartons wine racks Cabinets if your cabinets are lined up tiles uh, in the bathroom or in the kitchen um, linoleum squares and uh, and sometimes your windows. 
Sometimes you have windows that have multiple squares. Um, one thing that I liked um, is at John Muir, we have a teacher, her name is Malia Hong. She's the second grade teacher. I believe she's a third grade teacher this year. Um, but what she did with the raise was she created a village. And so what I did was created a village of a raise. So you have a two, uh, two by four, right? I don't know if you guys can see. What did what did you say, Adelita? Uh, take your your voice off so that you can see more of the screen. And and this is this just makes it fun for your students. This is a two by two array. This is a three by five array. This is a one by three array. This is a three by two array. And I just made little houses. And what she did was made a village. And she used foil, she used um, tissue paper and mod podge. Some of the windows looked like stained glass. But it was very engaging for the adults and for the kids. And again, it just built, further builds on their fluency. Can you hold it a little bit closer, Ms. Dawson? I'm going to translate while you hold it up. Entonces, esta imagen que Ms. Dawson está demostrando es una manera muy, también muy divertida este, de eh, ayudar y practicar esta manera de contar, con, de hacer matemáticas con nuestros niños. Ella hizo una, como una ciudad, ¿verdad? Con pura cartulina eh, y las ventanitas son las las um, arrays, no sé cómo se dice en español, pero es como, por ejemplo, ahí tiene tres, eh, la ventanita, el cuadro morado, hay tres ventanitas de, de arriba para abajo y cinco de lado a lado. Entonces, puedes contarlos de cinco en cinco o puedes contarlo de tres en tres, ¿verdad? En la otra casita de lado, a la otra casita azul tiene tres por tres. Entonces, ahí estamos también contando, um, practicando las tablas, practicando nuestros números. Esta otra casita tiene dos en dos. Entonces, estas son maneras, actividades que podemos hacer en casa con nuestros chiquitos, tener, uh, divertirnos y también practicar algo que les va a ayudar. Okay. Um, I'm going, to do a, I'm going to do a time check. So we're almost out of time. So we might want to um, just speed it up a little bit, maybe. Okay. okay. Do we want to skip fractions for now? Yeah, we can skip fractions. We can just move on to language. Okay, let's do language. Okay, we might not have time for this. Okay, we, uh, <laughs> we have been talking a lot, but. Um, Let's go here. Okay. So I don't know um, if if any of you have seen um, your chil your children's work, you know, at the end of the year and see them produce something like this. This is a, a how to book. A how to book is a really um, fun way of giving your child a chance to practice language and writing while being the expert on something. So in this image here. Um, we were making yuca in our kitchen. Um, it was something new and my child was very curious about the yuca. It looked different. She was asking, why does it look like that? When you peel it, it looks different. Um, and so we decided to, we, we were, as she was observing her auntie making the yuca and she was like really paying attention. We were like, let's write down the steps. Maybe we could share it with grandma. And she got really into it and wrote down. Um, uh, we made this little how to, um, you know, comic strip, but you can make a book and each step can be a page, right? This is for a six-year-old. Um, so we decided to describe this, you know, step one, step two, step three, step four. Um, if your child likes to, um, any anything that your child is good at, you can make a, a how-to book. Encourage them to make a how-to book. And um, es, Lo que estaba describiendo es un libro de cómo se hace. Un libro de cómo se hace es una manera muy um, también divertida. Puede ser divertida si lo hacen con algo que a sus hijos le gusta hacer y darle la oportunidad como de enseñarle algo. Si, por ejemplo, si ellos juegan um, 
muy bien al básquetbol, pero usted no sabe nada de básquetbol, ellos le pueden enseñar cuáles son los pasos para meter una canasta o si le gusta un videojuego y usted no sabe nada de ese videojuego, póngalo a que les, de, le haga un librito de, de los pasos, paso uno, paso dos, paso tres, paso cuatro. Cualquier cosa que su hijo sepa hacer, que usted le está diciendo, ok, enséñame cómo se hace de paso a paso. Y estás practicando escritura, vocabulario y, y cosas así. En mi caso, pues, está en español porque mis hijas van a una escuela bilingüe, ¿verdad? Another way to, ooh, are we, we going to do the can, breakfast literacy? <laughs> Just a quick note. Learning happens anywhere, everywhere at home. Why not do it over breakfast? Breakfast literacy. You can start with the menu, what you're going to have for your kids in the corner right here. I don't know if you can see it, Lala. And then you can break down those words into parts of speech. A noun is a person, place, or thing that goes in this column. A verb is just what you do. You know that it's a verb if you can put I can in front of it. And then an adjective is a describing word. So you can appropriate what it is that you're having to these columns and then commit them to sentences afterwards. Or if your fancy is to take a community walk, I don't know if you can see that louder. Yeah, yes. Um, if you can take a community walk in the area that you live, start with a social story, three to five sentences about the walk or where you intend to go. Have conversation or dialogue along the way. Um, I know some, I used to walk with some kids who used to look at the cement markers on the ground. They wanted to know where it goes where. And then once we got to where we were, We practice the art of exchange or spending money for goods. And then we always end it with start, change, and end. You started with an amount of money. It changed because you added or you subtracted, and then you had an end result. And then at the very bottom, you end with a number sentence. That keeps the learning at home. Home, school, connection. Sí, lo que Miss Jocelyn compartió es um, como una actividad de, de escribir lo que estamos viendo en la comunidad, ¿verdad? Se llama um, como, le, como leer nuestra comunidad, leer nuestro mundo. Entonces, si vas a una caminata en tu, en tu comunidad, hablar de lo que vieron, um, crear una historia de lo que vieron, conversar, dialogar y aprender palabras diferentes. Um, y eso también es una manera de practicar lenguaje y este, traer un poco de esa estructura a casa. Y ya estamos para um, terminando. So one thing that's been, that, um, did you want to do this one, Ms. Jocelyn? Yeah, okay. Um, <coughs> One, one thing that has been really helpful, um, I know for me with my, I have a first grader and a fifth grader, is to set a daily goal and reflect on how we did. And it's a small little thing we do in the morning and at the end of the day. So it can be something as simple as, okay, you know, um, at the end of the day, something that went really well today was, well, I, I, did, I did all my schoolwork and I didn't go into the room where mommy was working. <laughs> You know, something like that, or something that I need to improve is, um, you know, be uh, helping myself to doing the things that I can do on my own. So putting my own shoes or whatever it is that your child is working on, right? Um, and it really helps because it's it's providing that opportunity for self reflection and um, also recognizing the things that we did well. So celebrating those things that we did well. Jocelyn, did you want to add anything? I just wanted to, we, we said a lot, and I wanted to give um, the parents some time to process. Yes. So I'll just translate this briefly. So lo que um, queríamos eh, ofrecer en esta um, imagen es que estableciendo metas chiquitas 
y reflexionando con nuestros hijos cada día es algo muy importante porque nos da la oportunidad de pensar, de celebrar las cosas que hemos hecho bien y de trabajar en las cosas que todavía necesitamos crecer. Take us home. So, all right. So, um, what I would like for us to do as parents right now in this really troubling <laughs> right now, <laughs> allow ourselves to give ourselves permission to feel and release. Uh, can't hear you. The audio went off, Ms. Jocelyn. Allow ourselves to feel what it is that we're feeling in this moment, if there's vulnerability that we feel in this moment, if it is uncertainty that we feel in this moment, if it's fear that we're feeling in this moment, allow yourself to feel whatever it is that you feel in this moment, and then allow yourself to release it. Um, oftentimes, as parents, we are moving on this fast train with the teachers and everybody else, this fast train called education. Allow yourself the space to say, this is scary. Allow yourself the space to say, we're, we're, we're probably going to be out of school this year. What are we going to do? You know, and, and then allow yourself to say, it's okay not to be okay. Because we'll get okay. But we also have to have a place to put these things and allow ourselves to feel these things in this moment. En este tiempo de pandemia, ¿verdad? Este, queremos también reconocer que um, es importante darnos ese espacio y tiempo del de permiso de sentir lo que estamos sintiendo y soltar lo que no tenemos uh, control, las cosas que no podemos controlar, ¿verdad? Que no, um, no estamos dando toda esta información para decir, ok, hagan todo esto. Uh, estamos reconociendo que Nuestras vidas han sido volteadas al revés y a veces no nos sentimos bien y a veces no estamos bien. A veces necesitamos ayuda, ¿verdad? Um, a veces no podemos hacer nada de lo que habíamos dicho que íbamos a hacer y tenemos que darnos el permiso para sentir a veces esos sentimientos duros y um, soltar lo que no podemos controlar. Um, en esta oportunidad queremos invitarlos a, a poner en el chat algo que se les gustaría llevar de este tiempo que hemos pasado juntos um, para cerrar. Um, so I want to invite folks to add to the chat, you know, just one thing that you would, that you feel you can take away from this time together. And I also wanted to add that in this time, we will, as parents, when we feel like we're not meeting the goal for our students, we'll babysit this negative self-talk. But for every positive talk that you have, it wipes that negative self-talk. So take something away from this that's going to help you wipe it and give yourself permission to feel it and release it. También a veces um, nos, eh, nos empezamos a decir cosas negativas cuando no llegamos a la meta que habíamos puesto, ¿verdad? Entonces, uh, Ms. Jocelyn nos está invitando a darnos esta oportunidad para decir algo positivo y cancelar lo negativo que a veces también tenemos en la, en la mente de no lo hice bien, no me está yendo bien, no estoy logrando mis metas, ¿verdad? De eh, ahorita darnos permiso para, sol, para sentir y soltar lo demás. And finally, I um, wanted to give you all a chance to please stay in touch. Um, we will hopefully be uh, providing more of these um, workshops together. These are our emails. And this, I will be, we will be sharing this, I believe Ms. Ann um, on the chat will be sharing the, the slide, the slides with you all. So you can click on this link. This link here takes you to a, a resource sheet if you need any support with any anything, and please feel free to reach out to Ms. Jocelyn or I, or Ms. Ann, or Ms. Adelita. 
And please we make thank sure, you so much. Yeah, please make sure if you didn't put your email um, in the chat box because we're recording the chat box as well and we'll be able to email you the recording and also the presentation. And we, yeah. Sí, entonces um, queremos que por favor se mantengan en contacto si tienen alguna pregunta. Aquí está nuestra información. Um, también vamos a mandar una copia de las, um, de las imágenes que compartimos y esta, esta grabación también podemos compartirla. Um, so thank you again, families. You could have been doing anything tonight for an hour and you chose to be here with us. And we really appreciate you for that. Gracias porque pudieron haber estado en cualquier lugar haciendo muchas cosas que tienen que hacer como todos, y es escogieron estar aquí hoy. Gracias. Thank you, everyone. Con esto, con esto. <laughs>